Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to talk about some Yosemite National Park hiking tips. Now, if you've been here many times and you've hiked many times, probably not going to be a lot for you in this video, but if you uh, have maybe never been here and you want to get some hikes in, or you've been here and only done the roadside attractions and want to know more about planning a hike and getting away from all the crowds, this is the video for you. Um, this video also has an accompanying article. If you're watching on YouTube, the link is right underneath. But I have many more tips there. I'm not going to go through 15 billion tips on this video, just the top ones. Um, but I have a bunch more tips there, and I also have links to some of the things I talk about. So with that, let's dive in. So to start, Yosemite is a big place and takes you potentially hours to drive from one end to the next. So it helps to kind of chunk the park into um, sections. And you could subdivide these and figure out other things. But in general, you have Wawona in the south, and you have Yosemite Valley in the middle. And then up north, you have Tioga Road area. Now, it's, you know, depending on traffic, roughly 45 minutes to an hour, an hour and a half to drive in between each one of these areas. So when you're planning your hike, I would plan a hike from an area or do a hike or two in an area, and then, you know, move on. Um, it's not going to be practical to do a hike, say, on the Tioga Road, and then do one in Wawona, um, and then come back to, say, the Yosemite Valley. The Yosemite Valley is the um, kind of the central hub, so a lot of people stay there. If you're staying there, what you could do is you could do a day on Tioga, a day in Wawona, and then however long you have in the Yosemite Valley. Now, when you are driving around, just be aware that it can take you forever. You can get stuck behind somebody who's going 30 miles an hour, enjoying the sights. There can be construction on the narrow roads, in which case things will be closed. I'll put a link in the article for the uh, park alerts page where you can check for any road closures. But driving can be a pain, so I would try to minimize your driving. Now, if you're staying in the Yosemite Valley, there's a shuttle bus, and you can actually just take the shuttle bus to most all the trailheads, and there's, there's probably a dozen bucket list, really beautiful hikes right from the Yosemite Valley. So um, don't feel like you need to drive around, use the shuttle bus, do more time hiking than you do driving. Now I'm not gonna go into lodging in detail here, but just know that getting a place to stay in Yosemite is probably gonna be the hardest part of your visit. Things book out a year in advance. Um, and when you wanna you know, hike or figure out where you're gonna hike, Staying in the Yosemite Valley is a good choice, but of course, those are the places that sell out the quickest. You can stay in tents like Curry Village. You can stay in hotels like the Iwani that are really nice. And you can also stay just outside of the park. Now, if you stay outside of the park, just know that you're going to have extra time driving in and out to hit all of your hikes. Um, I'll put some links in the article that give you some recommendations on lodging. But in general, if you can stay in the Yosemite Valley, that's your best bet. You will be central to all of the hikes um, around the park. Now, when you're picking a hike in Yosemite, know that most of the hikes are pretty steep. Um, in all my guides, I have an elevation, an elevation profile, so you can get an idea. But if you're not familiar with hiking or mountain hiking, you might not know what the elevation means. I'll leave a guide in the article, like how many Empire State Buildings or something like that uh, equals 1,000 feet, so you can kind of gauge it. But in general, what <laughs> people get miserable because they're doing these really hard climbs that are just above their ability level. You know, 10 miles flat is not 10 miles up in the mountains. You also have the altitude, which, you know, if you're coming from the Bay Area or LA or you've flown in, uh, will, you know, deteriorate your performance and you'll feel it here. So pick a hike that's easier than you think. That's the kind of number one tip from the rangers that I get to. People always overestimate their abilities when they come here. And, you know, at the very least, if you do that, you'll be tired and you'll have to kind of limp back. But people have heart attacks, people have heat stroke, things like that do happen. So make sure that you're picking the right um, difficulty level for your hike. So when you're picking a hike, know that you only need a permit for Half Dome or if you're going backpacking, you need a wilderness permit. But for all the other hikes in Yosemite, you don't need any kind of permit. You just show up and you do it. That being said, you're going to want to show up early. And when I say early, sunrise is the best um, to beat the crowds. As you'd imagine, it's popular here. Trails get crowded. It's a much different experience to do a hike at sunrise and experience the forest waking up than to do it at 9 a.m. when you have people with Bluetooth speakers and um, you know loud conversations. So go early. Don't get a permit unless you're going to do half dome or you're going to go camping. 
if you want to do half dome and get a permit, um, I'll include a link and some information on that in the article as well. So I'm not going to go into depth on gear. I have a full uh, list of all the gear that I use on hikingguy.com. So if you want some recommendations, just go there. But there are some things I just want to mention that you might want to bring with you when you do your hiking trip in Yosemite. The first is good hiking shoes. Now, good hiking shoes should be uh, waterproof and they should have good grip. And basically you need those because there's a lot of different types of terrain here. You're walking on granite. Sometimes you're walking through mud. Sometimes you're walking through sand and gravel and having a higher cuff like on a boot will help keep that stuff out of there. Um, that said, if you don't have special shoes and you don't want to buy special shoes, just wear the most comfortable sneakers that you have. That will be your best bet. Don't pull out the old leather hiking boots that have been in the closet for 15 years and put those on your feet. Well, scream out in pain. The other thing that you should bring is a headlamp. So what happens a lot of times is people overestimate their speed. They go on a tough hike and they get caught out after dark. Having something like this or even a flashlight will help you see the trail, get back safely, and not have to call in a search and rescue. Another great thing to have is this printed National Geographic Yosemite trail map. It's really well laid out. The cartography is good and it has distances on it in between different points on a trail. Uh, it'll help you not only plan, but it'll also help you out on the trail. Now, if you have a smartphone, I would load um, a trail program, a mapping program like Gaia GPS, and I have a link to that in the tips guide and also my gear page that will also um, help you locate yourself with a GPS signal if you are out here. Now, you don't need a dedicated GPS. You can use your phone, especially if you're new hiking just make sure you put it in airplane mode if you don't have it in airplane mode it will quickly drain the battery and you will have a brick with you but uh get this it's definitely good there's also uh, uh trail signs at most of the trail junctions here they're pretty well marked and if there's not a sign there's usually a pile of rocks which is called a cairn or something else to guide you along the trail so know where you're going be prepared now, if you're getting into hiking and you're considering investing in some gear, you might want to get something like this. This is a Garmin InReach. This has uh, topo maps, trail maps, and it also lets you send text messages via satellite. And that also includes uh, an SOS signal. So if for some reason you're in the backcountry and you need help, you're sick, you get hurt, you have a heart attack, somebody else is sick, whatever it might be, you can use this to communicate with the outside world where cell phones don't work. It's expensive. There's a bunch of different options. I have uh, reviews for a lot of these on my website, so go check them out. Um, you don't need this, but if you want some peace of mind and if you're going to get into hiking maybe some more and you want to invest in a piece of gear, getting a satellite commuter, communicator like this uh, is definitely worth it. The climbs can be steep and rocky, and you know if the climb is steep and rocky, the descent is steep and rocky. So some people like having trekking poles here to help them balance going up and going down. As a personal call, I've done it with both. And there's different uh, schools of thought in each. But if you think it might help and you have them or you can get them cheaply, bring trekking poles. Two of the things you're not allowed to have in the park are bear spray and liquid detergent soap. So if you're washing your camping stuff in the water, you're not supposed to use liquid detergent soap. So just a heads up there. So lastly, for gear, let's talk about what you're wearing and the conditions here. Now, in the winter, you get snow. Tioga Road, Glacier Point Road are usually closed because of snow. In the summer, uh, temperatures can hit 100 Fahrenheit in the Yosemite Valley, so there are some extremes here. Uh, bring fitness clothes, sports clothes, that's going to be your best bet. And also there can be a uh, serious bug problem, so bring bug spray, uh, be prepared. Even a head net, a bug head net, if you have it, it's worth the investment for 5 bucks. I'd also strongly recommend buying your gear before you get to Yosemite. There's some basic things here you can get in the um, grocery stores and there's a mountaineering store. You can get some basic stuff there, but ideally you're buying these things beforehand at somewhere like REI. You're trying them out on shorter hikes by your house. Worst case scenario, stop at a Target or a Walmart in Fresno or on your way in um, and pick up some camping gear. It'll be cheaper than getting it here. Now, the last thing I want to cover is dangers in the park, which can be scary, especially if you're new to the outdoors, to the backcountry. Here are the top things um, that get people into trouble in Yosemite, according to the park rangers. Number one is overestimating their physical capabilities. So doing hikes that are harder than they think they can do, people get into trouble, people have heart attacks, different things like that. So 
We talked about that earlier. Don't uh, overextend yourself if you're getting tired. You don't have to finish a hike. You can always come back down. I'm pretty sure the views will be good no matter how far you go. Um, second thing you have to worry about here is getting caught out after dark. And we talked about that a little bit with the headlamp. Um, a lot of the rescues here involve people who have gone too far and now they are stuck somewhere and they cannot get out. Um, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a tough one to prevent. Um, other things people ask me about, bears. Uh, there are bears here. Generally, they're not uh, aggressive and it's, they're black bears and not grizzly bears like you have in Glacier. It's not too scary. Um, it's not too bad. People ask about the edges on the trails and are trails dangerous. Um, they're not dangerous. I would never recommend a hike or a trail that uh, I thought would jeopardize your life. You just go slow, take your time, make sure your footing is good, and you should be fine. Now, on Half Dome, people have died, uh, and that's a special case. And I have a guide to Half Dome on the website, and you can read all about that there. Um, but in general, if you're prepared, you're cautious, you're slow, um, you will enjoy the outdoors, and dangers are not really a thing here. Another thing I should mention, under dangers that did not occur to me until I finished saying what I just said before, um, don't swim in anywhere that's prohibited, and don't take selfies on edges. People do die, they fall in the water, they slip, they hit their head, they get washed away, they go down the falls. People have died falling off of the um, edge taking selfies. So I feel like I shouldn't have to mention this, but I'm going to just do it. Uh, use your common sense, and when the sign says stay out of the water, stay out of the water. So that's it. That's what I got. If you uh, want to know more or you want to find some of the links to the things I mentioned, go to the article on Hiking Guy. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link to that right under the video. And um, I also have some itineraries in the guide too. So if you only have one day, two days, three days, what are the hikes you should hit? Which uh, can you miss? Now, if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, if you're on YouTube, if you could click that little thumbs up, that will help other people find the video, hopefully hike safely in Yosemite and enjoy it. And uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And if you want to do some hikes in Yosemite, I have a whole bunch of them on Hiking Guy. I have a whole page all dedicated to Yosemite hikes. I have short ones, long ones, easy ones, hard ones, whatever you like, whatever you need to hike here in Yosemite, you can do it. All right, guys, I'll see you.